right, we back. My expert opinion, the greatest show in the world. Ah, I just love saying that, bro. <laughs> I love saying that. Yo, they're putting a lot of pressure on us to do live shows. That's something you want? Put it in the comments. Tell me where you're from. And we'll work on that. Definitely work on that. Hmm. Um, hit that like, hit that share. Let everybody know you in here. Don't cost you no paper unless you was a mother hater. Hit that subscribe button. Shout out to everybody that's been watching. Shout out to everybody that stays loyal to the show. Shout out to all of the members. Everyone that's been joining the YouTube members. Thank you. I will have some exclusive content for you guys up shortly. Matt. How you doing, sir? Blessed. Everything going to the end It's cold as sh outside. <laughs> you can't even get the tea out. Like, it's crazy. Mm. It's crazy. New York weather is different. Built for it, though. That's yeah, what we do. Thanks. We built for it. We built for it. Timberlands come out. No white I, sneakers I, I, today. But I wouldn't mind <laughs> hitting that. L.A. I wouldn't yeah. mind hitting Houston. You know, ATL might want us to come out there. Mm. You know? You can't threaten me with a good time. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. That's not Facts. how that works. Shout out to the UK. You know what I'm saying? Let, let, let's, 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 let's get go this tomorrow. Going. Tomorrow. tomorrow? Nah, nah. <laughs> let's go tomorrow. Nah, we got to get it right, baby. Quietly. Quietly. We got to get it right. When we step outside, <clears throat> things are never going to be the same. We were supposed Facts. to do a live show with the 100th episode. Facts. Mm. That's mm. why we under pressure. Because like 30 episodes yo, ago, yo, we're cut, cut that part out. I think they forgot. <laughs> cut that yeah, part out. Just remind me. <laughs> you going to be like, yo, yeah, Matt did renege on that. Yeah, I did. I did. But it's going to be much better now. Yo, the two people who already agreed to the first live show, stay tuned. Beyonce <laughs> ticket money. Yeah. Let's, let's charge that, Beyonce. Let's get that Beyonce, Beyonce ticket money. Let's get that, let's get that Beyonce right. ticket Damn, money. We gotta right. catch them all the tax so that everybody's getting their tax money back. We gotta get them around that time. Show a bigger man of God. We're gonna turn bigger into Creflo Dollar on tour. <laughs> yes. 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 The Lord said you supposed to get this money. I can see it going down. Yeah. It's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be perfect. <laughs> Shout out to everybody that's in the building. Shout out, shout out, shout out, shout out. Got my man Brooklyn Hands. BK Beard in the building. You know what I mean? Cuz over, what up, what up, what up? Yo, AJ. Yeah. AJ, stand up real quick, son. <laughs> stand Bow. up real quick. Bow. Yo, you see this kid? He's going to get somebody in the championship. Okay. So, mm. Future prospect. Look nice. out for him. Look NBA. out for him. Nice. You see him yeah. on the court? Your son playing, tell him, sit this one out. <laughs> sit this yeah. one out. Okay. <laughs> it's going to get nasty out there. Sit this one out. You heard? Nice. Shout out to AJ. Um, Splat Murder. You're already glass out. <laughs> glass out. Glass out. Yo, bro, how is it like six degrees outside and you, what are you doing, bro? You look good, nigga. You look good. You don't look good with pneumonia, nigga. Legs, nigga. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. You know you gotta come out of that eventually. Yeah, bro. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> Jack Force is jumping is outside, bro. Hell, can't do it. Cold world. What up, champ? I'm good. I'm good. Glad to be free. Glad to be here. You know, not doing it. Everything right, is going up. The trajectory is crazy. Yeah, three right. champs was nuts. No freaky. Yeah, yeah no, no freaky. freaky. Shout <laughs> to Nori. That was that was uh insane. Great That's look. Mine. Yeah, yeah I saw, right. we I passed saw, that, man. I checked y'all out. That was nice. We passed that, man. It was nice. We passed it. We got passed it. We got passed, passed it, bro. We, we got passed moving it. Moving on. Y'all caught me already. Yeah. Shout, Shout out, out to Nori. Shout out to DJ EFN. Yeah. Thank y'all for Shout out to them. Us. Everything's up, man. Make sure y'all subscribe, man. And shout out to all the people out there that I've seen today at the mall, at Shore Hills Mall. How many people? It's like maybe 26 people that recognize me out there. Maybe I heard 26? you got some flowers when you were down there. Really? I heard you got some too. Oh yeah. Oh yes, yeah, yes, yes. Somebody asked me, "Yo, nice. was I going to the Grammys?" I said, "Why?" <laughs> Come on, flowers from Nori. Wants to go to the Grammys. Yeah, I'm certified to the Grammys. Shout out to your friend. Then he too. Then
Didn't I remember? Didn't Those are brothers, man. Yeah, man. Didn't he get, didn't he get yes. some flowers? Well, nice. Gold Mark. flowers and a nice black. Big nice. Man. Yeah, man. I was looking at y'all so much. We were actually the yeah. season for men. You know what yep. Or this yep. year. Yeah. First, mm-hmm. first, first, first show episode of the year. Oh, that was dope. Thing. That shit shot through the roof. Good. Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I fuss with We're doing something good out here. Yeah. And I real quick, I just want to say shout out to Gap Murder for the spread love. Yo. Sweatsuit. Yo, this shit mad warm my award the right day. You feel me? It fit good. Black tails, you know, Brooklyn Pause. shit. Pause. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah, shout out to Gap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. We on some Brooklyn shit. Spread love. Make spread sure y'all at this man for these sweatsuits. Spread man. love this to Brooklyn. Is Work. I got one I'll probably yeah. wear in next episode. Mm-hmm. We gotta coordinate because I ain't wearing mine when you wear yours. <laughs> we ain't gonna be in here with yeah, like a group. Yeah, yeah. What color is yours? We need some more groups, man. What, what color is yours? No, I switched it up because this color is blue. I'm gonna wear mine on that. Right. Grand blue. I, I got I know you. You got me. You my Aries brother. So, Luke. Listen, man. Oh, they gonna say make a part of the Illuminati. Listen, listen. All day. There, oh, yeah, right. A, there's a lot. There's a, a lot of family in the building tonight. And I love it. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to say, I know y'all see this. Fresh, look at him. Okay, stop, won't stop. I used to say when I was broke, look at me. La, la, la. Wait till I get my money mm-hmm. right. <laughs> la, la, la. <laughs> then you can't tell me nothing, right? <laughs> it, it, it's, it's just a beautiful life, man. It's a beautiful life. Damn, I wanted to take that a little bit further, but we got a legendary producer in the building. If you didn't know where I was going, you're gonna find out. DJ Tunk is in the building. What up, what up? Tunk is in the building. Legend. Legendary. Yeah, man. Legendary. Glad to be in y'all cold ass yes, city, man. Yes. <laughs> What's happening? Uh, 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 Brick outside. <laughs> I get cold in Atlanta now, though. Yeah, it get cold. We might out of like three good cold days out of the year. You know? What the fuck is going on with the world? Because Texas is. Oh okay, yeah, man. You know this Earth shifting, man. There's a lot of yeah. shit going on now. Like yeah, some yeah, shit happens. Global it's warming. Bad. Global it's warming shit catching up to all human behavior. I don't bro. think it's global warming. That shit is getting cold, bro. I think it's just it's the cold position in LA. of, it's of cold. the Earth. I think yeah, it's, it, it's shifting. Yeah, it's just shifting. Right? I think mm-hmm. Tube ain't putting nothing out in a minute. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They put some more shit out. You got to create a balance, You got to create a balance. All right, I got it. You know what I mean? You've been balancing this motherfucker off since you were 16, right? Yeah, really? 14, really? Yeah. 14. Mm. That's when you put your first record first out. First record out, yeah. With Raheem the Dream. Raheem the Dream, yes, sir. Oh. Mm. What is what is that like? You're like, you're in high school. High school. And they're like, yeah, that's my record. Well, it's crazy. <laughs> well, I start I started DJing when I was in middle school, right? Like 12 years old. I was just DJing like 82. Right. And um, and after playing around with records, man, hearing, you know, the intro, the outro, the breakdown. Mm-hmm. Once I got, you know, making beats on the desk, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Hitting the, folding up the paper so it sounded like an 808 snare, all that old shit. Right. So, mm-hmm. but once I got in the studio, man, I feel I had the gift, the gift to actually create. So, who took you to the studio? Brian. Brian. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it was crazy. He had, uh, it was a dude, it was beatboxing at first, you know, we would, I'd be DJing. It was kind of like, of course, you know, everybody wanted to do the LL and Cut Creator or the Jam Master J type shit. So, right. I, was, I was the main DJ for him. Mm-hmm. Um, we would do parties and whatnot. So and one day he was like, "Man, I want to go to the studio and make a make a record, man. You know how to make some beats." I was like, "On the desk, but I bet you if you put me in front of some drum machines, I'd go crazy." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shit. Dude had a drum emulator and a DMX drum machine. Wow. Mm-hmm. Eighty five, fucking around. Logic Seven Studio. Got in there, played around for about two hours. Got the knack of that shit. I didn't know how to MIDI nothing. I just put both of them on the same BPM and hit right. one after another. Mm. We recorded that shit on a half inch Otari multi track. Wow. Old school shit. Old tape. school shit. And bruh, we put this record out. Because back then we had, uh, I mean, AM stations were really banging in Atlanta around that time. You want to hear some real hip hop shit, all the underground shit from up here, mm-hmm. anywhere else, but had to go to AM. FM wasn't really fucking with hip hop. What year was this? 82. Well, See, yeah, well, well, 85, 85. Well, well, 80, well 82 oh, AM was running it, but even up to 85. Might have, been, might have been the same around here. Yeah. Yeah. In the yeah. early 80s. A lot of underground oh, stuff. So, yeah. yeah. so we had V103 and then a new station, uh, Kiss 104. And um, so Kiss was trying to really compete with V103. So they were real open to working with a lot of local artists, but it really wasn't that many. Right. But um, and shit, man, we. Made the record, went and got it mastered, and shit, man, once that shit hit the radio, 
And it was like in regular rotation. So I'm coming to school like the superhero. Starting to charge like, you know, 200 more for parties and shit. Mm -hmm. Teachers like, yo, that's your song I just heard. And they was playing that shit even when you're getting dressed. You go to school, you get home, and before you go to bed. So it's just like, heard a song about what? At least like four times a day. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Were you getting a wow. check for that or anything? No. You weren't? No, I didn't know anything about a check, man. All oh, the thing I knew about a check was just for DJing shows and parties. I didn't know anything wow, about royalties. Wow. Yeah, I was a Damn. new jack. I didn't even know what book to pick up back then. Right. You know what I mean? Did you did you figure it out and get royalties for that record? You know what? I need to register that song. <laughs> 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 now, think about it, because you know, with all this streaming shit, yeah. Right. My, 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 my people, you still got the original? The original song? Yeah. Nah. I mean, I got the, the wax. Yeah. Right, not, but yeah. now you don't have it like programmed oh, somewhere in Oh, no, 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 no. That was right, a right. DMX and a drum later, man. Right, now, right. Those yeah. machines, like, I, she might want to holler at Dress. That that lawsuit yeah. he got popular. Right I now. heard you that. Yeah. Seven hundred and fifty million, right? You might yeah, fall that's into that. Yeah, that's yeah. 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 Class action. Class action. Yeah. Class action. Yeah. That means everybody yeah. could jump in. See what's crazy though. I started this shit in eighty five. I didn't see my first royalty check till ninety seven. Yeah. Damn. Well, you talking about going to college twice? <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So and that shit came from doing a uh, Doctor Doolittle soundtrack. You know, on a song that was not even heard on that joint. Right. Mm -hmm. So that album sold about three, four million, but that Aaliyah song, Are You That Somebody, was the strongest record that really yeah, with yeah. the fire mm -hmm. behind that. And man, shit, uh, my first royalty check from that, shit, it was about yeah, close to like a hundred and something, you know? Mm -hmm. And like I said, 97. So mm -hmm. yeah, but I don't want to go too far up into that because we're nah, still nah, back nah, in nah. the nah, 85. Nah, we, we need so, all that. Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so just, just a quick question. There were no cell phones, right? Nope. Okay, so you were how old doing this? What, which one? What, uh, Raheem. With Raheem. 14? 14. 14. 14. Yeah. 14. Mm. 14, 15, 10th grade. Keep your kids away from your cell phones, man. <laughs> they can focus on they can do a lot of listen. stuff. They ain't got them oh, cell phones. Listen, in man, you talking some real shit, yeah, man. Because a lot shit. of these kids, they they not really focusing on their craft, man. They got yeah. too many games to play, and it's like, and I always said, man, if you. If they was to cut a check when you get to the end of a Call of Duty or whatever, mm -hmm. hey, you know, after you done made it to the end, boom, you put in this code, we'll send you a thousand dollar check. Right. I feel it's worth it. Right. But just playing a game just to say, oh, I finished that shit and don't get nothing and you wasting all this time and power. Mm. No, it's good for hand eye coordination. Not if you're not. What, for boxing? Yeah. You're not boxing. You definitely learn a problem solve playing video games. Yeah. I get I give them that. Yeah, However, that's about it. It stops right there. Yeah, and gamers can make money. Yeah, but it's these it's social media more. I'm directing, mm -hmm. you know, the the shot at. Yeah, because there's a lot of people just watching other people live their lives. Right, and they're not doing anything about their own. Real, you know what I mean? Yeah, mm. that's real. And at fourteen, fifteen, shit, I was cutting hair, selling candy, and DJing. Yeah, I was hustling. You making? <laughs> no, <Nah, laughs> straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah dirty ATL. Selling candy and making beats. Yeah. And he was on the radio. Yeah, you can't. You my can't teachers won't be able to tell me shit. They, they wasn't, man. And I used to finish my work before everybody and join the whole class out. Like bro, whoever got the craziest looking sneakers, I'm like <laughs> just hitting them, bro. I was going crazy though, man. And like I say, I'm, I'm glad I tapped into my gift right. back then um, and, and just took it seriously. But like I say, I didn't really. I really can't say I took it seriously until I actually read and got some knowledge on what I was supposed to be getting. Cause, and it took for um, a man, DJ Magic Mike. I don't know if y'all heard of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, out of Orlando. So he was right. producing a whole lot of stuff, independent label and everything. And he was like, one time I was talking to him, he was like, yo, man, so what you saw off that Luke shit, off that Shadi album, off the New Jack City soundtrack? I was like, man, all I got was my 1500 up front. He was like, mm. bro, you ain't get no royalties? Man, that album sold almost five million. That was uh, color me bad. I want to sex you up. So, mm -hmm. but um, y'all, you remember the song "Dick in the Dirt," right? The yeah. part when yeah. uh, that's when uh, they, uh, song, when, when G Money was, was in like, "Yo, this shit make me just suck your dick." When they ride in the Jeep, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. my track plan. Wow. Yeah, I did that. Damn. Yeah, Dick in the Dirt for two live crew. I produced wow. that. SP twelve hundred. SP twelve hundred. Wow, I remember that. That yeah. soundtrack was amazing. Yes, it was. And Incredible. you were just you were fifteen hundred. All I yeah. got was my producer fee. I didn't no royalty. You know what I mean? I didn't know about that shit. Mm. Yeah, so so what did Magic to Mike tell you? Oh, he was like, yo, man, you got a lot to learn, bro. He basically sent me to school. I bought a book by Donald Passman, another one by Kasif. Mm. I'm Kasif, titles? old school producer. Yeah. Yeah. I think he passed away, but he produced a lot of some of the R&B stuff that, you know, right. from back in the days. But he wrote a uh, music book, too. 
And uh, shit, that's why I got a lot of game from that, man. I started mm. understanding sync fees mm. and shit, man. Once you understand that sync fee game, bro, mm. it's just it's a lot, a lot of checks so, attached. So you read Donald L. Passman's "All You Need to Know About the Music Business." Yes, sir. Yeah, I know about yeah, that book. That's one yeah. and one. Yeah, you know, yeah. I didn't read the, the whole book. I went to the main chapter that was based around what, what yeah, I had. Yeah, production and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. what I mean. And then when I figured I had a song on the soundtrack, that's when I handled my business the right way. And next thing you know, bro, shit, that check showed up. And it was, it was something. How much was that? It was like the first one was like a hundred, but I had a my foot was out in the streets too though. So really, once I saw that check, once I saw what was more than what I had in my safe, yeah. oh, that's when I stopped. I was like, all right. I'll take that. So you was hustling. Hustling. Yeah, I was reading that. That was my next question. What was <laughs> happening between point A and point B? Yeah, hustling, DJing, upfront money, touring, and yeah. After I come off tour, I come back and make plays. Touring with uh, shit, Poison Clan, MC Shadi. Um, well, during that year though, I was touring, DJing for uh, Goody Mob. Oh, that's yeah, what's I was, up. yeah, I was still with them. Album? Yeah, Oof. we was with the uh, the Fugees and the Roots. Yeah, that was a nice mm. tour, man. Mm. Yeah, we came through here. Yeah, we were all over there. Mm. What, what, how, when, when do you think you started to become a household name or a go-to guy for either? D well, DJing is, it sounds like everybody's coming to get you. Yeah, I went. I'm battling this stuff. I I get down. Like I battle. A scrap. Yeah, I like still scrap? got battle routines. Yeah, yeah. I was up here for the new music seminar. Sheesh. Yeah, when Melly Mel took Mikey D's belt. Y'all remember that shit? Yeah, I, yeah. Well, I heard about it. I was, yeah, I was that shit was crazy. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. So I was a, yeah, yeah, it was a, it's a new music seminar. used to be a rap. They had the rap battle and the DJ battle. Yeah, yeah Melly ain't tell us about that. Melly Mel? She yeah, yeah, he, he told us a lot of other stuff, though. He told us yeah, a lot Yeah, Melly Mel stuff. walked out of there with Mike D's belt, because you get these big belts that look like they're wrestling type joints. You know what right. I mean? And uh, and Mikey D burnt them on stage, but Mel was like, looked at the crowd, fuck that shit. Cause Mel had won the year before. He said, "Man, you don't get no belt." And he just the crowd just opened up. He walked off stage with both belts. Everybody was like, <laughs> <laughs> "I'll never forget that shit, man." <laughs> yes, that's how I like that. That was Luke. Yeah. Cause you know, cause when I was touring with uh with Shadi, and, yeah. uh, and that's when Luke was like, "Yo, man, I want to put you in a battle." You know what I mean? Right. But I flew up here too late, man. And that's when Scratch won that year. Scratch, yeah, yeah I remember that. That would have been hell, cause he, you could have took him. I don't know. He did a hell of a. He yeah. got down. Honestly, he got up on the table and did some shit that I usually didn't do, but on a straight up type routine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, he did some extra body tricks that was like, yeah, he might would have got me on that. He's yeah, still with scratch. That's my guy. That that I think that was the year that made him a legend. Like that. Yeah. In that one specifically. Yep. Then next thing you know, he was with EPMD. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was I, dope. I tore him with Luke. <laughs> <laughs> you, get that you, ain't, you ain't just going to tiptoe past that one like that when I was throwing Oh loop. my God. Yeah, what would, I mean, yeah, you were fresh out of high school at the time. Yeah, right? that's when I was with MC Shadi. Yep. Yikes. What was that like? Because Luke, you know, they were, they were pretty much, it was, they, this, is, this is the era when they were trying to ban two live crew. Well, right. that was later on, and I was the, I was on that tour too, because I was with the Poison Clan, the yeah. band in the USA tour, and that J was 1990. JT1. 1990, yeah. Right. But when I was with Shadi, that was 87, 88, and you know, a little bit of 89. Right. But uh, yeah, that yeah, that was a hell of a um, a hell of a eye opener, I would say, as far as to the real industry. Because when I was with Raheem, you know, we'd go do shows and come back home the same night, or either to just do shows on the weekend because I still had to go to school or whatnot. Right. But man, shit, when Shadi came to my crib, and oh, keep in mind, I never flew. I had never flown until I got with Shadi. Mm. I never even left. Georgia for real. We just go outside of Georgia, do shows, and come back. But mm -hmm. being on a real tour and going for like two or three weeks at a time, yeah. My parents wasn't used to that shit. I wasn't used to it, so it was a whole new experience, man. But um, yeah, being the youngest guy on that tour bus, man, I learned a lot fast, real yeah. fast. I came yeah. back home a real player. <laughs> Had way more, <laughs> more game, way more game than the average 18, 19 year old Yo. motherfucker for real. Yeah, yeah. right. Because yeah. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, that's Luke. Yeah, yeah. What, 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 what's the, what's the environment looking like? The environment, man. All right, I'm gonna keep it a hundred. Well, the first time I actually saw that type of action, where I was with Shy D first, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I ain't saying too much. These are facts. Um, we was with, we did a few shows with NWA, NWA. and I remember them, man. Yeah, they used to have girls lined up outside the door, man, just taking time to taking turns to holler at Easy. Wow. I'm talking about like 10 girls outside the hotel door. Just to, to holler at Easy. Wait for their turn. 
Mm. And uh, guess what? <laughs> all the young wild ass was like, man, I want to experience that shit. Wow. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it didn't get to that point, but uh, it was definitely whatever you say, man. You hit that stage and whatever I did, second setting records on fire, doing DJ routine. And when you get back to that hotel, man, and that lobby just loaded with women of all flavors, tall, thick, short, whatever, all flavors. You know, you can double up, triple up if you want to. That mm. shit felt like some Brazil shit, man, on tour as a young man. <laughs> 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 and I some spent it. DR shit. <laughs> Straight yeah, groupies. Yeah. You know, the groupie level, it was just, you know, all that shit was just so wide open back then, man, right. you know. And you guys were young, having having fun. Man, having a great time, dog. Uh, you, you, what was what's the craziest story that came out of that? <sighs> silence, silence. Uh, out of that tour, man, we got in a big fight with Rob Bass and them back then. That shit was crazy. No. Well, how that started? Yeah. What happened? Man, sound check. They they they, they 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 two times in a row. They was um, they went like thirty minutes late on the sound check, and by the time we did our sound check, the crowd they started letting people in the building. Right, and so it was just been... fucked up. I said, man, I'll run that shit again. It's going to be some problem. This is my motherfucking tour. So Rob and them had their own bus and everything. Right. But yeah, it got a little crazy, man. Like the third time they tried that, it was a little scuffle. We worked it out. The tour went on, you know. Mm -hmm. um, shit, man, Luke and them got into it with everybody. I wasn't there when they got into it with Ron DMC. That happened. Yeah. Luke and them got into it with Ron DMC also. There was a few little right. things, man. I'm taking. See, on. man, we used to get this down the south, man. Y'all know that, man. We, they yeah. kind of shit yeah. on us I mean, a little not, bit, not, man. Not really. We used to get I, shit it on. I feel up. like y'all believe that, but <laughs> New York really, like, you know, what I'm saying, like, for for a while, like, the southern sound was cultivated up here. Yeah, you know, what yeah. I'm saying? Like, but when it came to hip hop, yeah, it was like, hey, man, y'all late. Yeah, we all gonna catch on later on. But y'all got this to us, you know, y'all. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, and, and the respect it's, came. It's start here. Yeah, yeah, you know definitely. Yeah, it, I don't, I don't know so much as we were dissing you and shitting on you versus we just had a dis that New York had a disregard in general. Now we just gotta, didn't know y'all were doing anything. But 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 now you got to remember now. I'm speaking of eighty seven, eighty eight. That's my point. Mm. Shit, we don't happening? have we don't have we don't have the technology <laughs> to know that y'all are doing whatever it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. and right. If the tapes ain't coming up and a couple people ain't here, right, right, right. Yeah, you'd be know? like, eh, you yeah. you know what? You got to blame the majors for that. Okay. Because when you when you the majority of New York artists yeah. are on major labels and they're marketing in other areas, right? Whatever was ha happening locally didn't survive once it got got up to New York. Well, see, I'm gonna tell you, mm. that's true too. But on the street shit, cats from up top never looked at the South as slow. But on the music, they always look at us like we were slow at one. Like, oh, yeah. it just be slow. Like, man, y'all just getting that, y'all late. Y'all yeah, slow it's, it's down true. there. It's true. But yeah, on the street true. shit, though, a lot of cats from up here knew, like, hey, oh, okay, yeah, they're getting down too. But on the music game, it took a minute for us to get our respect, man. I'm telling yeah. you. It, I, we, I, I ain't going to say we had a hard time, but it was. It took I, a minute. I think it goes hand in hand with another game. Mm -hmm. and, and New York was just everywhere with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. On that other side, yeah. you know, we was everywhere. Yeah. So I feel I see like a lot of shit you meet down in there, you know, from yeah. down in Atlanta. Like that's where all the players used to meet back right. in the like shit, even from the seventies up to the eighties. That was the that the was spot. the spot. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 you want to get that pack and go back to wherever Milwaukee, whatever. You meet here in Atlanta. That used right. to be the hub. A lot of people didn't know that. Mm. You know, I, you know, my old, my uncles and my my pop man. That's that, they were moving. They mm. were getting down, and I used to. He's a young dude listening too much, listening too hard, actually. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Right. <clears throat> Trying to be right. like them. Right. Yep. Just so yeah. you know, we were wrong <laughs> in doing it that way. We were wrong to treat y'all. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh, we oh, oh it's gravy. It's yeah. gravy. I well, love it. What man. we should have done was start cultivating, start, you know what I'm saying? Listening, mm -hmm. pulling it, taking you under the wing, and hey, listen, yeah. here's no, what but we that did. But, 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 but what happened over? Yeah, but not, they're not, he's not wrong in feeling that they were being cis. When I used to be on the turntables and do certain shit. Well, you can't be from Atlanta. Got to be from up top doing that shit. I was like, no. Man. And who was saying, saying that? People in Atlanta. People in no, Atlanta. people from up north was saying that. Uh, people from New York. Like, I was DJing a lot of parties in the AU Center. Right. So, you know, in, you know, in the whole AU Center, you got people from everywhere, but a lot mm. of New York cats. And uh, yeah, when I get on turntables, like, oh, boy, you got to be from up top doing that shit, man. Don't nobody do that. I'm like, no, I'm from Atlanta, born and raised. Q Spalding Medical Center. You're like, come but, on. But mm. you were special. Damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So that's why they were saying. But that was a compliment. It was, it was a compliment, but like you can't be from here type shit. It was yeah, like, come on, man. And, and you knew it. Wasn't everybody yeah, else doing you know? that? 
Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> made you unique. You know I mean? It was a couple of men, yeah, but, you know what I'm saying? But it was, you know, it was a little even. It was like, you know, I was like, yeah. If 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 it, if it makes you feel any better, y'all got us back. <laughs> yeah, we weren't trying to get y'all back. We were just really if it focusing makes you on feel doing any better, what we Atlanta got us back. <laughs> yeah, long but time. but just know, everything, man, from the beginning, a lot of that shit, we were basing it around even the stuff I was doing for uh, Raheem the Dream. Mm-hmm. Shit, he was chasing his LL bag. You know, he started getting into the thesaurus, using big words and shit. Yeah. So, and I was on some Bobcat cut creator shit, trying to be like mm-hmm. Jam Master J and the rest mm-hmm. of them. So right. all of the influence was definitely was there. Bad. Facts. Right. Yeah, I can dig shit. it. I was, man, I could do some boom bap tracks like it ain't shit. Because yeah. that was the sound before we developed ours right. down here. Yeah, it was like shit. I first got an SP. Yeah, I was speed sampling records and going crazy. And I said, mm-hmm. you would have thought. Once again, well, you can't be from Atlanta doing that shit. But I was actually doing, <laughs> doing some up top type shit, though. Right. You know what I mean? So right. yeah, that, that, y'all we definitely have an influence. What would you what, what would you say is, are the key components to the Atlanta sound? Um, a lot of the soul, because you know, a lot of you know, that's really when you think of Atlanta, man. Um, you got to keep in mind that's the R and B era. First of all, the state of Georgia, you know, because people had a little debate with me one time. I was like, yo, you know, I respect New York for what they do, but a lot of y'all breakbeats came from the South. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, but then a lot of soul records came from, like, you talking about Millie Jackson, mm-hmm. Hamilton Bohannon, Hamilton Bohannon, Cameo, mm-hmm. uh, shit, it's a long list. We can keep going. Um, uh, Ray Charles. Ray Charles. Oh, yeah. Fucking, uh, Ray Charles is my favorite. Mm. Ah, Gene Carn, Curtis Mayfield. Mm. Uh, Curtis Mayfield. Man, we go on a list, yeah, of, of a lot of stuff that came from Atlanta. So that's an influence because my dad used to sing too. He was in a group called MVPs and they were signed to Buddha Records. Mm. You remember that little label with the Buddha? Gladys Knight and everybody signed it. Gladys Knight and Pitts from Atlanta. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah. like, so it was just, we, our sound was kind of like some. R&B shit at first, because the first rap that came out out of Atlanta, first rapper for real was a guy named Mojo. And if you hear his song, that was back in 82, you would have thought it was a- What was the name of the song? Uh, Let Mojo Handle It. Yeah. <laughs> Let Mojo Handle It. <laughs> We're going to check this out and when you hear it, real quick. And, 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 and when you hear it, it reminds you, James Brown, it reminds you of a, of a James Brown rap record. Oh, it popped right up too. Let Mojo Handle It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, he went to Washington High School. Yep. Hold on. Yeah, Mojo gonna love this. <laughs> if we can. If you can do it. If yeah, we right. Yeah, we can play like a little clip. Don't, okay. don't play the whole shit. But I want to hear what this sounds like. And it's funny. It's like a little skit at the beginning. There you go. Yeah. Whose phone connected to my speaker? It's the Joker. Hold on. What happened? <laughs> And it's a rap song. It's a rap song. See? There we go. Damn, is that just an instrumental? If so, I need to sample that shit. That's been still jamming. It would have started already, right? Damn. Yeah, that's an instrumental. Damn. Uh, I didn't even have that back then, the instrumental. Fuck. That shit sounds crazy. Let me see. Yes, Commissioner. That's it. Hey, man. It's the Joker. Wait a minute, Commissioner Gordon. We're tired of taking all these orders. Now, these are not those open days. So, you better listen closer to what I say. So, just relax. He laid it back. Just wait for him to hit you with the big old whack. Call Jingo Harris. It wasn't no sampling, it was bands. You had to have a band yeah. to get some it music back then. Yeah, 82. Huh? It's 82. 82. Boy, you fucking the world up with this one. That's funny. Ooh, boy, you fucking around bringing Mojo back out the woods wow, with this one. Still crazy. living and everything. They just honored him down there too, man. Yeah, that's Yeah, cool. man. Yeah, we still wow. call him on stage when we talk about just hip hop Atlanta, that, you know, as far as legends. See now, the, the funny thing about that is when I said what, what's the key components to the Atlanta sound, mm-hmm. um, 
I never think sampling. Right. I always mm. think, yeah, something played out. Real, yeah, heavy musical. Drums, yeah, heavy eight oh eight, and that's how. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. And yeah. So to hear of, that, hear that, knowing yeah. that was going on while we were sampling. Everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, well, it's, I mean, but up it. here now, eighty two, y'all wasn't even sampling. Y'all had bands 82. too. Y'all had bands. All that shit. It was here, coming. It was coming shit. from the disco era. Yeah. I know, but it wasn't the sampling. It was just it was bands. It wasn't right. That's what I'm saying no, because the yeah. disco oh, okay. era was, was okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All that enjoy Sugar Hill. Oh, boy, that the band they played it. Think about rappers delight. They played that shit just like Chic. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever that band was, they were incredible. Exact. Wow. Mm. All that treacherous three shit. Yeah, man. That that was real bands. But uh, yeah, we didn't have SPs and nothing back then. You had right, to really right. round mm -hmm. up. A, yeah, so that's what in Atlanta we used to have a lot of live bands. They used to battle down there, man. Like. Had a band called Maga Brain, um, Bad Water, all kind of bands, and they used to battle a lot. Right. So when the, when Mojo decided to make a song, yeah, he got with a band and rest just rapped over the beat. Wow. Yeah, when nobody on drum machines and none of that shit. And he was the first rapper to come out of first. Yes, yeah, sir. Hmm. Mm. Salute to Mojo. Yeah, Mojo. Bro. Salute, yes, sir. Salute. Now there's a couple other rappers from Atlanta. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is that's, that's a lot. You yeah. help cultivate. Okay. Their sound. Hmm. Who would you say? Uh, damn, that's two big names right at the top. But trap music was uh, a project that you worked a lot on. Yes, sir. Um, to my before Ti, was anybody else that you were working with out there? For Tip, uh, I produced some stuff for Lil John. A song called uh, "Shawty Freak" a little something. Shawty freak a little yeah, song. Yeah, that was Jazzy Faye singing on the hook. Okay. Yeah, so right. I produced that. Yeah. Um, who else before uh, T.I.? Um, like I say, yeah, Raheem, Shadi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Raheem, Shadi, Lil John, and T.I. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it went from there. And after T.I. was Jeezy. Mm -hmm. T.I. was Jeezy. Yeah. 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 What was the T.I. connecting? Like, oh, how that happened? Yeah, how that happened. Well, when I was uh, when my other foot was out there, me and this guy too, may he rest in peace. Um, we used to get down, and um, he used to always tell me like, "Hey, man, you know, I got a little cousin, he could rap his ass off." So, man, we just got to keep him out of jail, though. He always getting into shit. Mm -hmm. He hard hit as hell, but you got to hear him too. So one time he just brought him. I saw him walking up the driveway, little skinny motherfucker, like he got wings and shit. <laughs> <laughs> he was 19 then. Yeah. So uh, I had my little 300 ZX system in there. So he had a cassette, man. He was like, yeah, you know, we sat out there in the driveway listening to his shit. And I was blown away, bro. His rap patterns, like, all in between the beats. And this 1997 right here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. So. And he had Dude, bars. Bars. And he had bars. Shout bars. I'm talking about Punchline right. City, yeah. like yeah. back to back. I'm like, ooh. Yeah. But at first it was him and the PSC. Right. And not to take nothing away from them. They were cool. But whenever his verse came, I was like, God damn, who was dude? He's like, yeah, that's me. So I ended up asking that three songs in a row. And that's why I finally hit stop. I eject the tape. I ain't even, I, my, I hit the stop button on the, in the car. I was like, hey, man, listen, <clears throat> your boys are cool, but we need to work on you. Yeah. We'll come back and get them. Right now, I'm fucking with you. Right. And so, man, we went to the um, studio and I say the first song we did called VIP, mm -hmm. Stay Down. I still got some of those on tape, too. I wish I brought mm -hmm. them with me. Mm -hmm. They cold, man. Those um, are unreleased, right? Unreleased, yeah. Mm -hmm. But those are the ones that got everybody attention because I was running around the city thumping that shit like a sack. Like, nigga, I got the new motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm rapping all y'all. You know, of course, you know, you got Outkast, but as far as a solo rapper, right. bars, you know, then you know, half he's half New York, half Atlanta too, because this yeah. old man used to be up here. Yeah. So I and I didn't learn that till later on. Oh, say that again. <laughs> so his, old, his old man used to stay up here. Right. So, so he's, from half, Harlem. he's half Yeah, half and half. Yeah, that's a suck. Yeah. Harlem. Yeah. Harlem. And so yeah, you so credit for that one. Okay. Right. So his his ear was a little bit more seasoned than the average 19 year old in a, out of Atlanta. You yeah. know what I mean? Because he was listening to all the old school shit too. So his that's why his his patterns and everything, the way he's just supposed to beat. Was totally different from any artist, and I was working on like three or four artists at the time right. before when we met. Man, I, I still love y'all, <laughs> but man, when that dude came, when I met him, bro, he like, came all through. Right, all right, I had to put yeah, them I, to I the call, side, I call, man. I call next yeah, month. yeah, man. So we, he, <laughs> I had my little studio set up. 
he'll come through, man, just re- and it, I mean, I didn't have to record. I was able to just make the beats. But right. it, we, we record somewhere else. But man, yo, after about three or four, about, after we did about four songs, I knew we had a chemistry, bro. And we started moving around with, um, with, uh, with the little demo. And I recruited uh, Jason Jeter to be his manager. Because mm-hmm. I was like, yo, I'm the producer. I'm not really a manager. But right. Jason was uh, interning at Patchwork. So he, was, he had just moved from New Jersey to Atlanta. Right. And um, after a few studio sessions, um, nah. You know what, though? Before Tip, I would say I did something for Jim Crow. Mm-hmm. Jim Crow. Jim Crow. Yeah. Yeah. And How, uh, was, how was that? That was cool. A song called Bandits. Polo the Don, yeah. that's when he was rapping. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 A group called Jim Crow. Yeah. yeah. Right. So uh, that was Polo, uh, dude named Motown, and who else? Uh, damn, I can't think about the cat name. But mm. yeah, Jim Crow. And uh um, shout out to Jim Crow. Yeah. And um we was at Patchwork, so I just basically I used to see Jay reading books all the time. I'm like, damn, dude, you know what's up? You in the industry? Are you trying to get into it? He's like, man, I'm thinking about management. I said, I got a little dude who you may want to manage. Right. Mm-hmm. So I introduced them to man. We just started hanging out, hitting Buckhead every weekend, hitting all the clubs. I won't even say weekend, because it was somewhere to go almost every day of the week in Atlanta. Right. And so I just started, you know, taking them around with me, man, and people started getting more familiar with them. And, well, see, I like back then. See a young player, season. Like I used to come out to the club with a few numbers, but that boy there at 19, he was coming out. He was, he was coming up. He was a little player yeah. now. Right. Yeah, that's he was on his shit. That's what's yeah, up. we talking about before anything. Yeah. Just his game. Just you know, he just yeah. had some slick shit to say. He's an old soul. Yeah, you know, he got a, definitely got tell. an old soul. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah. yeah, see, he was hollering. I mean. It, I mean, it's old school shit. You know, he's marrying everything now. Right. But yeah, he was he was dating a grown ass lady back then. Mm. Yeah, mm. nineteen. Yeah, driving a yeah. car and everything. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, he's a player now. Yeah, he's one of them dudes. So, so, mm-hmm. but yeah, well, man, and um, so from there, mm-hmm. you you got him to a level where he got the record deal. Yes, sir. What happened? Um, so after we recorded the songs. All of us had a copy, me, him, and Jason. So mm-hmm. Jason caught KP, because KP was the A&R at LaFace at that time. Right. And- um, Kawan Prather. Kawan Prather, yes, sir. Yeah. Shout out to Kawan. I, re- I remember having a meeting with that guy. I'll talk about that another yeah, time. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it was interesting. Yeah, it was real interesting. Okay. <laughs> it's when I knew the South was definitely about to take over this whole okay. shit. Okay, right. Because mm. he, he sat in that meeting, he was like, all you New York niggas is nice. You got something else? I'm like, what the fuck, I'm supposed to be whack? <laughs> what the fuck we supposed wow. to do this? That's how you know I mean? came crazy wow. too. And I was like, ah, yeah, this shit about to Yeah, we change. had something to say. Yeah, we had something to say. Look like Drake said, we had something to say. And um, and Kawan, uh, KP, he was with uh, Parental Advisory at that time. Right. And so when Jason let uh, KP hear the demo, he was like, oh my God, this little nigga's dope. He said, matter of fact, let's get him on one of PA records. So he got on one of PA songs and just bust, went crazy. Mm-hmm. And um. Shit. Next thing you know, I think KP took it through all uh, LaFace. And he fell in love with it. He had a deal. Mm-hmm. That's when LaFace was still in Atlanta. Right. And that era right there, Atlanta was all right. We was we was all right for a minute. So so Def played a major part. Shout out to JD. Yeah. But JD, when LaFace to touched JD. down in Atlanta, when LA Reed and Babyface set that label up in Buckhead, right on Peachtree, bro, that shit just took us, us to a whole nother level because mm-hmm. we never had that type of access ever. Mm-hmm. Right. Like I say, the biggest label we had was So So Definitely. Of course, you had Ichiban, but they was more of a distribution label. Right. But the face was that label. You walk in that building, come out with a check longer than your fucking arm. You know what I mean? Mm. So, yeah, man. Uh, once we got that deal, you know, it went smooth. But then, um, of course, things start changing. That's when they- No, no, no. A lot happened in between that time. Yeah. You made 24s? Well, 24s was with Atlantic. That's right. when after we- That's when the- when the deal had um, basically fizzled out because right. we got released from um, LaFay's Aristos slash. What happened? What was the problem? Um, well, after KP left, it was really nobody in the building rah rah for, for us. You know did, what I mean? Did so, he go to Columbia? Well, we we hit a few labels when we came up here. We did meetings. We, no, no, KP. I think he went to Columbia next, right? Yep, he did go to Columbia. Yeah. Yeah, I think Sony. Was Sony Columbia? What was it? Yeah, uh, yeah, Sony. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's most likely yeah, that's what you. Yeah, that's <laughs> what, <laughs> look at the That's what I ran into. <laughs> oh, yeah, shit. Yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> it was funny, though, man, because when we came up here, we was talking to Mark Pitts, 
And, you know, and we were basically like, you know, me, Tip, and Jason sitting in the office. We was, uh, it was shit, man. It might have been almost like 12 inches of snow when we came up here that time. Mm-hmm. And uh, Mark was like, so what y'all want to do, man? Working on another album? We like, man, we really want to get off the label, dude, because we ain't getting no real support. Right. You know, we down here with our mixtapes and shit, we doing shows off Dope Boys in the Trap. And that was the biggest song mm-hmm. off that I'm Serious album, which was a great album, right. but it just went kind of... Yeah. You know, with no with no push behind it, you know, mm-hmm. no type of energy, man. It just kind of fell between the holes. But um, and they let us off the label, and that's when we went to. You know, we did a meeting with Atlantic. All that shit happened in one week up here. We mm-hmm. was moving around, and Atlantic gave us the deal that we were really looking for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was was he signing your production? Nope. No. Nope. It was just a connection. Just a connect. Yeah, I would. <laughs> Even after reading the Donald Passman, I didn't learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, yeah. That was a chapter I didn't know. <laughs> you still didn't figure it out. It's a little good. You know good. now. Right. But yeah, but um, yeah, because I'm I'm officially supposed to be the third owner of Grand Hustle for real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But uh, like I say, we worked everything out. You know, everything mm-hmm. was. You know, they did right. Like executive. Yeah, I was executive producer on the first two albums. You mm-hmm. know. Yeah. So Major cool. albums. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Major- Definitely. Tip was one of the guys who made everyone look at the South different. Yeah. Yeah. Him, definitely. Luda, Field Mob, Outcast. Jeezy. Out, Outcast, of course. Jeezy. Cell Therapy Jeezy. Boys. Jeezy. Yeah. Oh, Goody Mob for sure. Goody Mob. I, I say Jeezy was the was really the one that okay. I gotta, yeah. I gotta say, I gotta well, say. Well, Jeezy nah. played his part, but more you saw more cats wanted to be like, you know how like a lot of folks wanted to be like. What makes an artist that artist when motherfuckers got you on a wall as a poster and want to be like, yo, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear my hat like that. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm going to dress like that motherfucker right there. Right. I went through my LL stage. I used to rap a little bit. I got bars <laughs> when I feel like it. And, but I used to have rappers on my wall. You know what I can say? You know, it wasn't no weird shit back yeah. then to have yeah. your favorite, you know, Slick Rick poster Facts. or whatever. Right. So mm-hmm. I wanted to be like LL. Hey, I had Kangos and everything. You might see me on a few old school album covers. You'd be like, oh, two was on his LL show. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so my dress code and everything. And I saw a lot of cats wanting to be like Tip yeah, and right. like T.I. And then uh, at the same time, when he was on stage, I'm watching these girls go crazy. And the last time I saw women scream like that was for LL. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I got a fucking superstar right here, bro. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And once I saw it, how he covered the South, and then we started doing shows everywhere else, I'm like, oh, okay, this ain't just no Southern shit. Right. Mm-hmm. This dude got something for real, you know? So so when, when he popped up with Rubber Band Man. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Puff was in the video. It was like the ultimate yeah. cosign. And see, mm-hmm. and that's when the um, and that that and from Puff being that on that connect because before we signed with Atlantic, yeah, Puff was definitely just trying to sign the bad boy. Mm-hmm. Puff, had, uh, I think, going into the year two thousand two or three, Puff sent us a tour bus and we came and brought the New Year's in in Miami with him. And that was like his way of like, I right, let y'all know how serious I am. Right. And I tell you, your whole crew, man, I'm gonna send the bus for y'all. And yeah, we kicked it. It was yeah. it was incredible. Yeah. But uh, he decided to go with Atlantic though. Wow. But Puff still like, you know, I fucked with you. So he came to the video. Yeah, that played a major part. Nice. He showed up. Is yeah, that man. Banner's beat? Say it again? Band, man. That yeah, yeah, Banner's. that's David Banner. That's David yeah, Banner. shout, shout out, out to David Banner. Yeah, yeah, that's my guy. That was, yeah. a, that was a blast. Oh, yeah. You still have, uh, we'll, we'll get into that later because <laughs> that's going to be a whole big conversation. We so no. Yeah, he's, he's rushing through this stuff. Yeah, oh, my bad. Cause cause like, how, are you, how are you doing? Because for him, he's, he's done it already. So he's just. <laughs> I mean, but you know, mean? when you talk about, you know, T.I.'s <laughs> biggest <laughs> records, can we, can we get to how they were created? Which ones? Pick one because you got all of them. Right. All right, let's say um, short of rubber band, man. You got the rest. Well, let me see. When you think of uh, the ones that really, like I say, the I'm Serious album, I didn't have any like singles off that one mm-hmm. until Dope Boys in the Trap, but we never did get a video for that mm-hmm. because by that time we was off the label, so we did our own little independent video. I don't mm-hmm. know if y'all pulled that shit up. I was acting like L.A. Reid or whatnot. Because <laughs> I was playing as L.A. Reid in the video type shit. Right. And it was like Tip calling him saying, hey, man, you know, I'm ready to get off the label type shit. So we did like a little whole reenactment of that shit. But when he really got noticed um, and we was putting mixtapes out. And so Dope Boys in the Trap, like I say, was the leading record. But the In the Streets mixtape was a song 24s. Mm-hmm. That was a beat. I was shit, yeah. cutting hair mm-hmm. every day. So that was the first song I heard from Tip. Yeah, that was the one. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I had so early I got up that morning, created that track, and then you know uh, as a producer, 
you know, you had that one track that you're working on. You just let that shit play all day for like four hours. Right. You go right. get something to eat and come back. Right. And listen to that shit again. Yeah. Walk on this side of the house. Oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Still jam. Yeah. Outside the door. Closing. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. You just keep listening to it. It was the yeah, track of the day. Right. Yeah. And so he came to get a haircut, got him in the chair. He was like, man, shawty, that shit, that hard. But you was still cutting hair. Yeah, I was still cutting hair then. Yeah. Mm. yeah I just cut him the whole PSC. I keep everybody faded up. Right. And so uh, he was like, shawty, that shit hard. So he couldn't even keep his hands still because he was bobbing. I was like, hey, man, let me just stop that shit. I said, I'm going to play it when I'm getting back to your lineup. But right yeah. now on his fade, you know. Right. And so um, by the time I was lining his shit up and finished the haircut, he was like, man, I got a whole song of that shit. He was making a song oh. in his hair while I was cutting his hair. Right. He said, man, mm. please, man, don't even play that shit for nobody else. Hmm. Dun, 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 oh, dun, 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 dun. Yeah. I mean, the whole breakdown and everything. Right. I was like, oh, I, you know how you make shit in a song mode. So we just gonna let it loop, right. you know. So the breakdown and everything. So he just he fell in love with that shit. He had the song written, and uh, once we went to the studio, laid it down, put it on the mixtape. Radio stations was giving us crazy support, even with being unsigned. They were still playing our shit. Mm -hmm. who, who, was the, who was the top DJ at the time in Atlanta? Yeah, Greg Street. Greg yeah. Street. yeah, Greg Street definitely shows some love. Shout, Shout out, out. that's my dog, yeah, Street. Street, and um. Yeah, he ran that shit, man. And um, next thing you know, uh, that's when the Atlantic saw the traction that we was making with that song. Mm -hmm. And that's when he was like, hey, you know what? We ready to sign y'all right now. Whatever numbers y'all were talking about, we we willing to do that. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, let's do a video as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Shit, man, they came and after the deal, I, shit, they came with a real budget, man. We had to done the video and everything. How much? How much was that contract? That deal was worth about eh, about two or three mil, you know. Two or three mil. Yeah, but you had to you had to bring the attention to yourselves. First yes, on yes, your own. yes. We definitely had to get Pay the buzz attention, going. fellas. That's you got, had to get the buzz going. <laughs> yeah, right. for sure. And um, and we were kind of like it wasn't really too many people doing mixtapes in Atlanta around that time either. Okay. Yeah, because we came up here and caught vapors on that shit, and we, I think when when they went to Texas and they saw how the screwed up click was moving around down there, With like all Slim the tapes, Thug and right. them. Right. Yeah, it was. Millionaires off that shit. And so that's when he brought that whole energy and he was like, Tune, man, let's just get all these hot ass beats and just put these shits out. I didn't understand that shit at first. Right. But, you know, mixtape, I'm thinking mixtape, like mixing and shit, yeah. DJ and scratching. DJ, right. yeah. You know, that's what I used to do. Right. But he was like, no. You know, and then when they start playing, um, I think I was listening to uh, what, Children of the Corn and mm. Ron G and all of them. And oh, I was like, oh, okay, that's the type wow. of mixtape you're talking, talking about. about. Okay. Yeah. This is before so, you hooked up with drama, right? Right, yeah. right, right. In the streets, yeah, that was just shit we were putting out, you know, getting them printed up, had a little artwork with everybody on the cover or whatnot. Oh, that shit, it, it, the magic was, everything aligned the way it was supposed to go, man. It made a lot of sense. Before, just to go back a quick second, when mm -hmm. you're on the face, mm -hmm. KP leaves, mm -hmm. you're getting no support. Right. What was that, what were those talks like? When did you realize that no one was going to move for you at all? Because looking back on it now, <laughs> it feels like somebody should be fired. Shit, yeah, when Jason couldn't get nobody on the phone. Mm. Yeah, he was like, man, let's just go up there. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> we just made that drive. And that's when um, LA sat with us. And then, like, when I, he left and went to lunch, and we was talking to uh, Mar Pitts. Mm -hmm. And that's when uh, Mar was like, hey, man, you going you know, gonna to let you off the contract. Because at first, you know, our main thing was like, man, don't just come on, don't just hold us up, man. We're trying to move forward. You see what's happening. What was facing? What, what, what did LA What was say? the issue? Yeah, well, was LA it, was, was about to see. LA was is about it the whole regime change thing. Like? That that whole thing, yeah. Because just think. Uh, that's see, crazy. honestly, man, and I asked LA um, one time, and uh, I said, "Hey, man, why did you sell the face, man? Why did you?" Right. He said, "He said Prince told him, man, that was the uh, worst thing he could have done. Man, he said Prince cussed him out real bad about that. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I asked him, mm -hmm. um, I asked him straight up, like, dude, what happened? You know, he was just like, man, just." Deal he couldn't deny, and I'm like, man, if you would have kept that shit going in Atlanta, don't you know? Like, come on, you was winning back to back. Everything mm -hmm. came out of the face was fire. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know he, what he I mean? couldn't give you a real answer as to why he sold it. Couldn't get a real, yeah. Of course, you know, he, he wasn't gonna tell me all the business, the background part, but he just said, yeah, right. he, he regret that shit. He said, Prince well, told me. Should get fired. I'm always down. super curious about label politics in the building when the artist f finds out that no one is supporting it. No one. And the talent always seems to be super obvious. In, but it, in but it's usually when, like the, when there's a change in who's running. Yeah, because the whole of face basically fizzled out around that time, too. That, but that's my, the talent 
doesn't change. So you're right. selling it to people who are coming in claiming they know the music right. business. Talent. Usher still Usher. T.I. But see the thing T.I. about it, now you got to remember that L.A. Not taking away anything from him. That's my dog. He wasn't really. He's not really a rap guy. He's more of the R&B guy. Right. Fair enough. So you got to think that why it was only two rap groups on the face. Outkast and, and, um, and yeah. Goodie Mob. Well, Young Bloods came later on. Yeah. Later on. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it was more of an R&B label. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? So LA wasn't, he, even when we were talking about doing a video of Dope Boys in the Trap, he didn't, he was like, what the hell is the trap? You know? Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? This is right. OG, you know, who do R&B out of Ohio. You know, he, he don't yeah, know, he know nothing. Yeah, That's when know you got to trust shit. the people that you hire. That's yeah, what, no, but 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 it's, they, but it's was gone. like it's like but KP it's, was gone. So it's giving somebody else credit when they work with an artist that was there before they got there. It's like mm -hmm. that was somebody else's project. You I, know what I mean? Like I, it's I understand it, but I've never I've never been a fan of that that way of thinking. I think that shit is corny. Yeah. Oh I yeah, think, well, that's I'm, a fact. I think that's yeah. super corny. That's a fact. We we've heard so many artists talk about yeah, and then we you know they brought in such and such and such and such left, mm -hmm. and then it was like. All the support was gone. Oh, what happened? It's like they strangled. Uh, all right, this is what you was working yeah. on before. Throw it in the trash. Yeah, fuck that. I'm just what? Yeah, like it's just crazy. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're it don't not make answering no sense. the phone. That's it's hard to get folks on the phone because you know things that change. Like I say, when you KP was the guy, that was our main guy. You know, mm -hmm. so when he left, it's, yeah, things just it's like uh tip project. Uh. Don't worry, he came up to New York and started hating on him. It was cool. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get you, nigga. I'm gonna get you, nigga. He's shooting at your Kawani. He's shooting at you, my guy. But yeah, man. But like, like I say, it was um, all that shit was um, like I, I look at that shit as a college course, man. As a semester, man. We 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 learned the whole life, you know. Right. That shit took me all the way back to school again. You know, I thought right. I graduated in '97. I learned the whole another shit again. Right. right. You know, mm -hmm. just really how to go about dealing with labels and all that. Right. So. That shit took me to school all over. So I now we're from at there. Atlantic. Now we're at Atlantic. Yeah, at Atlantic. Okay. Yep. At Atlantic. That was Mike Karen and Craig Craig Calman. Now is 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 this the you don't know me? Uh well it started Sing off with the um um the trap music album was first. You right. don't know me came uh that was um I think that was Urban Legend album. Right. Urban Legend. Yep. Twenty, so twenty fours was the first thing. Yeah, know. right. Twenty fours. Yeah, that was on. Uh, and yeah, you don't know me was guy. your next. Yeah, joint. yeah. Right. Long as tooth is on the beat. Yeah. yeah. Video and everything. <laughs> right. And that's when I was like, "Hey, man, you gotta say my name on one of these fucking records, man." That, wow. Please, man. That, that, was, that was another yeah. joint. Yeah. yeah. That and he finally got them. He finally put me on that motherfucker. You, I was do like, you have yeah. tags now? Because I gotta ask. Because uh, I was wondering why Bink didn't have no tags. You got tags? Well, Bink, y'all think Bink used to have a tag? He said he don't. You don't. Nah, we even came up with one for We came up with one like, yo, Bink, can you put a tag on this? That's going to be his tag. I remember, okay, <laughs> damn, I remember hearing some of his beats and it's like a female voice go, Bink, Bink, Bink. The Humble Monster. He used to, I yeah, guess he got rid of it. Now, you yeah, yeah, know, know what? It, I think that was on one of the joints. Yeah, one of the joints he played yesterday. Yeah, that's right. now, but back but then, in the, in the records, it wasn't. Yeah, 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 on the records. Nah, yeah, nah. And I never, uh, no, I went, tags wasn't really the thing. You know, it, before it was really tags, it was about, you know, after the rapper do whatever he do, you go in the booth and do your extra shit and put so, that, you know, like yeah. like how Swiss yeah. Beats. Yeah. You know, huh, hey, huh, huh, huh. yeah, there. do yeah. that. You know, uh, same thing with Pharrell. Yeah. Jazzy Faye too. Yeah. You know, ladies and gentlemen. Jazzy Fizzle, so that was, chisel. yeah, so that was the tag going <laughs> you know, in that booth, that you know, stepping that mm -hmm. shit at the beginning or at the end, just, you know, to put the curtains on the track. Right. But, but uh, I yeah, I was always. In the streaming era, tags are necessary. Yeah, but I'm gonna it, tell you, man, we I, don't have the the books anymore. Right, 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 right. Be like, oh my oh, god, I miss that? them days, man. Yeah, Listen, yeah, let me oh, tell yeah. you something about those days. That's really what made me want to fuck with the music industry. It cost in what 78, 79. I'm going through album covers, and I'm like, wow, look at the studio recorded, mixed by damn. What kind of keyboard they use? Yep. And I still didn't know I was gonna be a producer, but I was reading credits on old Tower yeah. Power, yeah. Heat Wave albums, and I asked my dad, I'm like, so. What is the engineer? He was like, uh, you know, that's the guy who do all the mixing and stuff. So I'm asking these questions, not knowing that I'm actually be doing this shit. Right. But uh, reading though, and I shit, I, even when I used to read um shit, the um all the shit from up here, man, I knew what studio LL record at Chun King and mm -hmm. yeah. mastering, you knew um where it was mastered. Um, yeah, her right. powers, then he used yeah. to put little messages in the record. Yeah. So I used to see all that shit, man, like who mastered it and all that, all that info was there, but now. Shit, man, you really, where can you get it? Right. You know? 
So um, it's, it's that's there, why that's you, why it's sad. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and and you know what? I got a little tag, and I take that from you. Don't know me, Ashley. When you say Toop is on the beat, beat, beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got that, but you I it still one. haven't been on anything that's been released with that tag on it. Right. And um, uh, and honestly, I'm guilty of bringing that kind of like how I was moving on that other side, just low key. You know what I mean? I wasn't really that loud dude. I, I wasn't in really a hurry to really be yelling on no you know, videos and nothing. I was just like, right. Shh, you know, you yeah, on your place. You sit back yeah, here, you know what I mean? Place, and everybody like, man, you need to come out, man. Stop being so shy. I'm like, I ain't shy. I'm just, you know, moving smooth. But now, in this era, this is yeah. show me era. You yeah. got to let yeah. a motherfucker know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you, if you don't, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. They will never happen, bro. You, you got to let, you got to say it, say who did it, who did what. I peep how he just like tiptoed over, you don't know me. Yeah. Being his record. Yeah. That's like, that was like, <laughs> very humble. It's like TI's biggest record. And he's just Word. like, yeah, I had something on the You Don't Know Me joint. Was that yeah. his biggest record? That's a fact. Uh, That's a fact. Because now, we're getting, into, now well, we're getting into the, his best. Well, you, you don't hold know on, me. Hold on. You don't know me. You're going to tell me that's not his biggest record? It's one of them. It's one of them. It's, it, it, What's that, number one? What you know, know about, about that. that? What you know that about that? Huge. Yeah. No freaky. But no you don't freaky. know me. No you don't know me, That's though. That's yours, too, though. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but, so, so yeah. come on. I said that. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we was talking about which, which but, was his best beat. That was my yeah. Now, now, let's keep straight. Now, 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 you don't know me was our first Grammy. Right. Mm. Um, Best solo rap performance. Mm. Yeah. Right. And. Got a Grammy. And I'm going to tell you, though. If you go to YouTube and pull up. Uh, when you don't know. Uh, when Tip performed that shit on the Apollo. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, bro. Y'all showed some fucking love up here. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that whole crowd was crazy at the bro. Apollo Theater on that shit. I wish I was there. But when, what you know about that, bro? What oh, you yeah. know? That shit, that changed everybody's life. Bro. Told you. Don't you know I bro. got a key what, what? by the tree mm-hmm. when I chirp, 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 chirp back. back. Louis Knapsack, where I'm holding all the work at. Yeah. Yeah. What you know about that? What you know Ooh. about that? Slow down, that was crazy. Superhero music. Son. Made you want to move in slow motion no matter what you was doing. Back, bro. <laughs> hey, man, back. let me tell you something. And that came from, um, once again, just being in the in the den in the 70s, dropping the needle with Bird of Flat going away. And there's something about that song, man, the way when it got to the end, it was sad, but it was so triumphant. I'm like, my yeah. God, all these strings and shit. And it just mm-hmm. built up crazy. And I don't know if you notice, I, I sample the end of songs most of the time, but that's right. when that when it really just yeah. Yeah. dramatic. Yeah, the climatic, the dramatic part, part. The climax. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and I always have love, just like that whole thing, man. I didn't even have to even play the record again because I, I remember the melody so well. This dude named Wanda had taught me how to use reason. Mm. Jerry? No, nah, uh, oh. another dude. Yes, one that got out of um, Atlanta. He was an engineer. Right. And once I learned reason, man, I synced that mug up with the M- MP, and replayed, you know, the um, the going away track. And mm. bruh, we played it. I played it for a few people. First, uh, Eight Ball MJG had it. They had a song called Alcohol, Pussy, and Weed. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think that could go with so far. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they were kind of upset. <laughs> you know, cause I was like, yo, where's the clean version, man? Right. You know, and uh, they never, I was like, how are you going to clean this up, man? Like, I'm trying to get how on the show. What was the alcohol? Alcohol, man. pussy, and weed. <laughs> <laughs> alcohol, <laughs> pussy, and weed. <laughs> it was like, right. ah. yeah. it could be a nice anthem, but how far can it go? And then yeah. uh, Benzino and Birdman did some shit over the track. Cause mm-hmm. that's when I was just sending CDs to everybody, man. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, but I know that's your favorite rapper right there, but Zeno, <laughs> that's your guy. No, John, nah, that's shout out to Zeno. Yeah, that's my dude. Shout out to Zeno. But Zeno, everybody tried to rap. Well, I ain't gonna lie, my Even I, even I said shot. Ben Zeno and Birdman, my nigga. I'm just, <laughs> oh, and it didn't, oh. Yo, don't man, act man. like y'all don't know what I'm talking about, son. Man, you said Ben Zeno and Birdman, my nigga. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Put me on game. Right, right. What? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Show no. I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't the most <laughs> lyrical track. Oh my God, yeah. man! He, he was. I, I was like, no, you guys, no, you can't have that. <laughs> Actually, and I was like, yo, how did you even get that? Oh, that's crazy. How did you get that instrumental? But that's it's the crazy. dude. One of my homeboys used to be in the studio, had a copy of it, and he he thought he was doing me a favor. Like, man, 
yo, he gonna put you in Source Magazine and everything. I'm like, no, I already been in Scratch Magazine. I'm good. Yeah. Mm. Wow. But uh, and I was, I, I swear, I was wondering how the hell they got that instrumental. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, man. Sure. And I'm like, how the yeah. fuck, man? And so, uh, yeah, of course, yeah, I, I, I rejected yeah. that one, man. I went with that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yo, hold on. I went with that shit. <laughs> Shout out to Bird, yo, man. I've been seeing no, it was Mad Love. No, Mad Love. Mad Love, Mad Love, Mad Love, Mad Love. Man, yo, you know, we, choices, you know, man. Yeah, Come on, you know, I, I, I have that right. Choices. You know, I have you know that right. Saying? And I'm like, no, dude, that's, we're not going to do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you. Make me piss on myself. But I'm gonna tell you. So, so shout out so, to Jerry Barrow, Scratch Magazine. Yeah, but I'm, but, yeah, but, but I'm gonna keep this shit 100. <laughs> Once again, New York. Yeah. <laughs> New York niggas played a major part in that song. What you know? And I'm gonna tell you why. Mm -hmm. Because around that time, I had my shit popping, and that's when I that's that's kind of how I was moving tracks around because it was a little shaky with me and them for a minute. Right. You know, you and I, who? And uh, Grand Hustle, because right. okay. I felt that hey man, it's time for my produ produce my producer rate to go up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all got cats on here getting thirty k a track. Shit, I'm y'all still got me at seventeen. Mm -hmm. Shit, nigga, mm -hmm. who, who who bringing the single? Let's turn these numbers up. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know, Craig and Mike, they was with it, but Tiffany was like, oh man, you trying to burn through the budget? I'm like, motherfucker, you can get that per show, more than that. You know, so mm -hmm. let's do this. And um, so. When I played that, uh, when I played that song for Tip, he did a hook to it, and it was crazy. The magic was in the room; everybody was loving it. But when Gene Robeson, when G. Robeson and Gene came to Atlanta, and they wanted Tip to play some songs and listen, you know, just for the new album, they heard about that song, but he didn't play that for them. Hmm. Mm. But when they came to my studio, it was like, "Hey, man." I heard y'all got a whole nother record, man. Where is that shit? Mm. I said, yeah, I got it. It ain't nothing but a hook to it. And when I played that shit, it was like, that's the fucking single. Mm -hmm. Why did he didn't play that shit? I was like, mm -hmm. man, you know, just some shit. You know, they trying to see what they can do without me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, I love them dudes. Yeah. But they, you know, they, they, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they had, you know, they was trying to get other producers, right. you know, who came close to the sound. And I was raising hell to Atlantic about that. I'm like, how can y'all try to fuck with some cats who, you know, who mimicking my shit? Instead of just dealing with me direct, mm. like wow. why the fuck? Going Come back on, to man. Is, is, that, is, is that how it is? Like, uh, okay, producer produces mm -hmm. hits, then your price goes up, and they try to find like a cheap replacement. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, they'll try to like, remember what we get this from anywhere. Yesterday. We, That's why mm -hmm. he's asking. They figure, they figure we get this from anywhere, you know. Oh, we got some such such got some beats like that. Nah, it's a difference. Yeah, yeah. I actually come in and produce. I'm not giving you beats. I'm Give me the cadence and everything. I'm right. fucking around. I'm even there for the mix. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mastering if I got them feel like flying. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, from beginning to end, literally, you know. Right. So um, yeah, man, it took for them to really push the pin on that because Tip, he was digging it, but when G and them put that fire behind it, it was like, listen, man, you're gonna have to finish this record. This is the one. Mm -hmm. And then when they told uh Mike and them about it, it was like, yeah, man, we're gonna give you whatever you want for this, man, you know. Mm. So we worked out something, you know, I ended up working it out with Mike and Craig more right. than the Grand Hustle. Right, wow. Yeah, it was perfect. Wow. That's crazy. Why would Grand Hustle not just... Hey, man, it's just how shit go. And I honestly, want me to tell you... Yes, I do mm. want you to tell me. Yeah. Want me to tell you some real shit, and a yeah. lot of cats don't say this. I want you to tell me some real shit. When you think of any situ... A lot of situations, and you try not... I'm, I'm not trying to use this as an excuse, but it is an excuse. Because as you get older, you'll say, that was a little fucked up. Even when you think about... People say, you know, with Luke. Right. A lot of people got fucked around fucking, you know, with Luke down there. You know, mm -hmm. shout out to Luke. But a lot of people didn't get what they deserved. You right, know what yeah. I mean? For selling a lot of records. But right. you gotta think, this was like a 26-year-old exec. Yeah. Master P, young. Mm -hmm. A lot of people ain't happy about how that came about. Right. But now that you're older, you'll say, ah, oh, that shit was wrong. It was a little mm -hmm. fucked up. Right. So Tip and Jay, they was, you know, shit. I'm like 10 years older than Tip. You know what I mean? Okay. And they didn't get it, but later on. They were like, yeah, that's why we still cool now because they they know like, yeah, that was a little fucked up. Fucked up, you know. Is it, is it that classic? Uh, some day ones want to keep you at day one. Yeah, mm. it's, it's a, it might be a little bit of that too. Yeah. You know. Okay, so can we mix that in with the fact that these young executives learn the game from dudes who are used from to old screwing? Yeah, you do executives who are used to screwing people over. Yeah, 
and then really it could be that a little bit of that, that and, it, and it's, it's a little bit of that and i would say it's a little bit of um just not knowing just thinking that you're doing the right thing right. that's that's what i'm saying yeah right. you learned it from this dude yeah this is what he's been doing but 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 i wouldn't but even with that situation i wouldn't say they learned that from anybody because neither one of them really had experience with nobody so you it don't was think like somebody might have been in their ear trying to tell them, here's a savvy business practice, do it this way? You know what? It might have been their attorney. Some type of influence. It might have been their attorney yeah. or somebody who got in their ear. That's but I don't saying. think it was another exec, though. No, it doesn't have to be. Yeah, exec, just, just, just some another seasoned person could have gotten who like. Who knows paperwork and said, this is man. how it's normally yeah, done. Yeah. Do it this way. This yeah, is how pay it him works. this. And, you know, yeah, I was like, oh, man, that fee got to go up. Dude. But see, I'm going to tell you, That's I don't why. know if y'all know. I know shit went up after that. Hell yeah. What? 50 plus. No less than 40. Out. Yeah. Well, but, other people had to be coming to you by now. They, hell yeah. Out that, all that, but, that, but, but see, I'm going to tell you, straight up, that's when I end up getting the respect back from them is when they saw that I started br bringing the fire to other people. And that just, that's just how shit happens, you know? Right. It just happens. That's, that's how I go. Mm. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, but on that TI versus TIP album, I was nowhere to be found. I did yeah, know stuff. Yeah. And see, and that's when, and when I found out that they were paying Wycliffe almost 70000 a track and didn't want to give me no more than 20 something, I was like, bro, I'm going to sit back on this one. Mm -hmm. so I'm just going to get my hustle on, fuck with uh, Jeezy, you know, Yay, and all the rest of them. I just started mm -hmm. going crazy. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're getting it. <laughs> we're getting money, it. Right. Jeezy. Mm hmm. All right. Well, the reason why I say I feel like Jeezy really like opened the doors in New York for the South. One, he got hope to fit sixty-four bars on the same. Yes, <laughs> that's one. But the whole uh, uh, trapping, even though it, it, it kind of originated with Ti and Ti, kind of putting that in his music, mm -hmm. trap music, and all that stuff, we really kind of like bought in to Jeezy. Right. Like there were snowman shirts selling up and down 125th Street, Everywhere. Fulton Street, uh, 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 Coliseum. Like yeah. people out here was like rocking the snowman shirts. Like, so let me tell you on like some real shit. New York shit. <clears throat> and on some real shit. Now I remember when Jay was running, when, when Jay was with um, Jazz and even with Dash, mm -hmm. they had their own money before he, you know, he got on. So Jeezy, since before, um, after Jay, I've never seen any rapper get on and have his own money to bring to the table. Jeezy, oh, he was already straight before he had a deal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because he, he basically he had his label way before y'all even heard of him. He had an a album called Hard or Soft. Um, mm -hmm. It was a hard album and a soft yeah. album. Yeah. Pause. Pause. Independent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hard or soft. Yeah, but, 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 but I hear you on the pause, yeah. but it was about the no, dope. No, no, I know. I know. <laughs> like crack, I know. you know, know crack or powder. So I hard know. or soft. Yeah, so that's what it was. Look, somebody was going to say it eventually. Yeah. I just, I I just said you. it first. Yeah. That's all. Somebody was going to say it. What's it going to be? Oh, man. You fucking guy. I love it, though. So, so Jeezy is one of them dudes who I would say back in Buckhead, man, it was. Like when you heard, you know, you heard about him, but you knew about him more than you heard his music because he was pulling up and whatever. Rocking diamond oh. tennis, tennis necklaces before. A lot of cats had to get deals to rock the shit he was rocking and pulling right. up while he was driving. Right. So Jesus was getting that, he was getting to the bag way before, you know, he really even got signed to Def right. Jam. So he was one of the first artists I saw who, I'm like, okay, damn, he got his own shit already. Like, so the way he was moving, once a label yeah. got behind him, he couldn't do nothing but win. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. Like, was, and, and just really mm -hmm. repping what, you know, and rapping about how he was moving for right. real. And, right. you know, and it matched. It made sense. Yeah. Like, right. and, and it was a, it's a boatload of respect that come with that, yeah. you know. Right. See, you standing on the couch right next to me. You somebody. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be somebody. And your shit hitting, the lights hitting your shit the same way. And we know it's real. Right. You know what I mean? Wasn't no more than that. No, that. It was just a real diamond. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I know my diamond shit too. I've been on that shit for a while. Right. I just don't really rock it like I used to. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, Jeezy, man, he, um, I would say he definitely played a major part. He brought a lot of the hustlers out, man. Like, yeah. like Tip, Tip did his thing, Outkast and everybody else you could think of out of Atlanta. But Jeezy is, the, uh, is, is that motherfucker who brings, you go to one of his concerts, bruh. You'll see cats who you've been wondering, like, oh shit, he out. 
<laughs> Facts. Oh, Facts. You know, some cats, you ain't go, you know who to sat down. You ain't yeah, go see yeah. them till a big concert come out. You know, they ain't just in no clubs, but Listen, the right man. the right show. It, it, be like, it's oh, real. Shit. I tell people all the time when Thug, Mo- Thug Motivation One Hundred and One came out, mm-hmm. the night that I listened to it, I woke up in the crack house. Dead ass. Woke up in the crack. Yeah, man. That's <laughs> and that shit represented what how so many folks were moving. You know what I mean? And it was cats who was really getting money, but it wasn't yeah. rappers. <laughs> just but he felt yeah. like, but he felt like, hey man, this man right. is really yeah. talking to us. And that's right. how we felt about uh my man Toot, who I told you was T.I.'s cousin, say, say right? Say the name, say the name again. Toot. T.I.'s okay. cousin. T-O-O-T. Matter of fact, I don't know if y'all saw the thing when, when he say he snitched on his cousin. He, he yeah, 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 that's yeah, that's yeah. his cousin too. Like I've been knowing him since what, fifth grade. Mm-hmm. So Toot is the person who put me up on reasonable doubt. And when mm-hmm. I heard Jay-Z talk about that damn uh, Range Rover and that four, difference in the 4.6, 4. I was 0 like, 4. oh my 6. God, this boy talking about shit. Talking about shit That's when man. I became a Jay-Z fan. Toot turned me on yeah. to that. And so- Can I live? Yeah. Was and, a joint for me. Yeah, imaginary player blew me away. Yeah, 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 yeah that, was that shit, shit was like, <laughs> ooh. Friend he was shooting, that he shit, was what? shooting on that one too. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was the evils. It was so many, man. So, So the way that that move, the hustlers back then, Jeezy moved the hustlers of that era the same way. Like, oh, he's talking our shit. He's talking to us. We must show up. I'm gonna go pull out the mix. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shout out to my man like that who came in with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna pull out the motherfucking yeah, mix. Right. All the players. When it's a Jeezy concert, boy, you're gonna see yeah, they come out. all they jury. Even if they got to go just shoot the jewel up, hey man, he go 40, man. Let me just walk out with all these. Yeah. Just it just you can't show up to a Jesus concert and you can't, ain't looking you can't like, like that guy. Yeah, yeah so man. that's you gave that dude hits. Oh, Jeezy, yeah. yeah. Did, yeah. And T.I. Thank you, man. and company had yeah, to thanks. watch you working with this guy. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I love, love it. Thank you, was quickly becoming Crazy. the face mm-hmm. of the South. Thank you. Bringing out all these gangsters and hustlers and all these real legendary dudes to his concert. Yeah. And the crew that you were with who refused to pay you now has to watch you Put this other guy in rare yeah. air, and it made sense, you know. Right. Mm. Come on, man! That first line he did on our uh, boys and him is take it too long to lock up, bring it back. We were short anyway, so bring a stack. Mm. <laughs> Who can't relate to that <laughs> shit? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you know? That's a fact. So I wouldn't even know. I ain't never heard of. Uh, they telling him that it's fucked up. I hadn't helped. Had to open up a thing since '94. <laughs> no, we'll swap it out. Come on, man! He was talking that shit yeah. like. Yeah. We thought it was dangerous to really go that far and <laughs> right. shit. Tiffany's, you know, he was saying to my husband, but Jesus, the detail. Yeah. Man, come on, man. It was yeah. Different. So you're right. You're it was right. Different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we came in, we did a video up here that took it to a whole nother yeah. level. And yeah. come on, man. Again, the pop co sign. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Now right. that was a beautiful time, man. Yeah, it was. I swear I'm sure to God. for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. The guys who doubted you are now watching. Oh, yeah, win yeah, yeah. They watched me faces. get down. Oh, yeah. Did, did you get what you wanted from Jeezy? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he didn't hesitate. Yeah, it was lovely. Dope. And you know? then Kanye, how long? After yeah, how did that, that Kanye thing? Wait, 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 wait. Well, wait, with Jeezy, wait. let me see. What we got? Uh, I love it. Mm-hmm. Then I did. Uh, I got money. Mm-hmm. And I did. Um, recession, the intro record. Yep. It's uh-huh. a recession. Everybody yeah. broke. But yeah, that uh, that I got money. I don't know what that turned into. Can't tell me nothing. Right. Mm, yeah. Yes. Now, now okay, so. I know you told the story before. Yeah. <laughs> can you tell us in detail how this happened? Yes. Yeah, we're going to do it on my expert opinion. You heard? Mr. Yeah. Mr. My yeah. expert opinion. <laughs> Swing count, nigga. Swing count. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well, I got money. That's one of them joints. Well, first of all, man, like, I love the way, um, the, ho- the way the magic happened. I had a little studio in the West End. Mm-hmm. Jeezy shit, he'll pull up over there solo, you know. Sometimes he'll be with his entourage, but everybody knew. You come to my studio, dog. He can be Rick Ross, everybody just saw it by themselves. Right. And um, he pulled up like, man, what's up, OG, man? Let's go through some shit. I played that one. He played on, uh, I love it. He fell in love with that one. And when I played that, I got money. He's like, man, please don't play this shit for nobody else. I got some shit for that. He had, he had the hook right then. Mm. <clears throat> and he was just tapping me on the shoulder like, I got money. I was like, oh shit, I promise I won't play this shit for nobody else. So boom, he ended up getting Tip on that record. Mm-hmm. So Jeezy featuring Tip, I got money. And off that album, that was one of Kanye's favorite songs. And Ye was like, man, can I get on that record? 
excuse me. Jesus was like, yeah, you know, cool. Ye was like on some producer shit. Hey, man, send me the files. I want to do some shit to it. I want to try to remix it. How did you feel about that? I felt funny about it at first. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, what you going to do? What the fuck right? you going to do with my file? What the fuck you mean? Right. You know what I mean? Right. So what's wrong with it? Yeah, what's wrong with it? Like, I think it's dope. I, you, know, you said you like it. Right. So, um, and, and I can respect that later on, I was like, you know, just, you know, all my ears got different creases, man. So you're going to hear that shit in a whole nother way. That's right. a problem. You know what I mean? That's so, yeah. That's mine too. I ain't get that shit from nobody. Um so and so um Jesus hit me and was like, yo man, yeah, you know, say you wanna holler at you and whatever. So Jesus definitely is the middle man. He put it together and said, man, I'm just giving me your info and let y'all talk about this shit. And so when Ye uh, sent it to me, he sent it to Jesus. This was just, that's when I really got into emailing, uh, sending files off. So once he sent it, to Jeezy, Jeezy hit me back like, man, what the hell that man that did? Man, it's, uh, it's all right. Tell me what you think. I was like, okay, I'm listening to this shit now. And I heard the, oh. That's like, what he added. Oh. And it sounded weird. Yeah. And then he had took some of the, the uh, lot of my horns out. Yeah. And it was some little strings in there. The organ, and I was like, yeah. Right. And I was like, okay, I see where he's going. So, uh, it's still going to be a collab. Uh, I got, you know, a remix, but but when Ye put his verse on there, he was like saying what he was saying. You know, it was right. totally different. But it was still about getting money, but yeah. it just wasn't in the line of what Tip and Jeezy did. Right. So mm -hmm. you wanted to treat it like a remix, but after a while, it just didn't. Jeezy was like, ah, it's just all right. It's all right. So when me and Ye hooked up again, he was like, man, I want to make this shit a full song. And that's when we just started going back and forth with the files and whatnot. I started putting my more energy into it once I saw where he was going. That was our first time really collabing right, via yeah. um, uh, via email. Email, right? You know what I mean? Mm. And uh, the magic was there, bro. And when I heard that shit, that all that oh, it all it made sense then because I heard it, the whole vibe of it with strings. Right. Well, yeah, but Jeezy ended up getting back on that remix. And he blessed <laughs> that bitch. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, that's all. Uh, was the ad libs the already there? Yeah. The yeah, yeah, yeah. It was already, already in the track. See what it is, cause he had the, he had the stems. Right. So those, if you listen to "I Got Money," all those ad libs are in that same, same exact pocket. spot. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Cause it's funny, it confused a lot of people. Cause when they heard the song, they were like, yeah, "Oh, that's Jeezy." Yeah, we waiting for his verse. <laughs> right. Yeah, I and think it I, never happened. I think I just heard him back there, yeah. and it never came through. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. but he just decided to leave it in there. That's just that's Ye, man. Being that guy, he is. You know, yeah. he just he, he he come left field with that shit. Man. And that and that was the record. That he let off with in that Kanye versus Fifty. Yep, mm, I remember that. Yep, oh yeah. seven. Bruh. Yeah, we did TRL yeah. down here too. Matter of fact, we, we performed. Can't tell me nothing on TRL. Yeah, yeah, I was back there on the keyboards and shit. Fire. Yeah, fire. Yeah. Man. How did yeah. how did that feel? Because I know that was a big moment. Incredible, man. Because um, see, that's that's what makes that that whole um graduation situation so special. Jay specifically came to Atlanta to work with me. He wanted mm. the sound. He was like, dude, I want to do my album in Atlanta. So we started at this studio called um, Doppler. Mm -hmm. First, we started in my studio. But my room might have been like half the size of this. But I had some big ass speakers banging. But his whole thing was like, man, you know, I might, like, want some girls to come through, man. Where they going to sit, man? This just enough room for us to make beats. <laughs> yeah. He said, man, we need a bigger room. Yeah. So we booked time at Doppler. And we oh. end up starting, we basically knocked the, the graduation out, album out, started in Doppler and finished up here mm. at uh, Chung King. But, um, Chung King. Ooh, so you was with him for the whole process the of whole the graduation project. Yeah, I was one song from being an uh, executive producer executive on that producer? Album. Yeah. Mm. I had three mm. joints. It was another one that was called um, uh, I Done Did It All with him in common. It was mm -hmm. hard as fuck. Matter of fact, with him in common. Yeah, him in common. Yeah, Who's I that? produced that one. It's somewhere, it's somewhere in his hard drive. Yeah. Bro, mm -hmm. man, I got so many unreleased records on some of these uh, artists out here. It's another version of Hello to the Bad Guy, too, that I did. That's that with, with like a no yeah. sample version, but uh the sample version, I think y'all would love that more. Cause mm -hmm. you know, you'll fall in love with that one more. But the original version, it was hard too. But mm -hmm. yeah, we just end up keeping the sample. Yeah. Well, I'm wait, hold on, real quick. I'm I'm curious as to where your sound made a shift. Because you had a sound when you did stuff for T.I., Jeezy, mm -hmm. Loud, Synths, and, and, mm -hmm. um, and Horns and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then there was a pivot 
at graduation, in my opinion, right? Mm -hmm. It was a pivot sound wise where you started using like cymbal sounds in your mm -hmm. drum patterns. Well, the um, cymbals are, was in I Got Money and uh, another song called Look What I Got on T.I.L. Look What I yes, Got. Yes, yes, yeah. it was. But when you hear Say Hello to the Bad Guy, oh, yeah, it came to when you hear Can't Tell Me Nothing, yeah. it was more prevalent. Bam, that's when bam. I, you know what? That's when, when I, I knew, when, oh, that's And, and when I noticed that, other people noticed that, I was like, turn them symbols up. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's that's your signature. Right, right, you know, right, that's right, my right. signature. Right. But I didn't know that until people were like, hey man, you know you got this sound. And I'm like, oh, let me start turning that shit, that shit up. up. Right. That's mine, you know what I mean? And what's yeah, crazy me, is I started yeah, listening that's crazy backwards. That you that. Yeah, I started mm -hmm. listening backwards because after I heard Big Brother, I was like, this sound like the symbol that was on Say Hello to the Bad Guy oh, yeah. on American Gangster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, this sound like the symbol that was on this. I'm like, all right, let me start moving backwards. And then I'm like, yeah. oh, can't tell me nothing got it on it. Right. You know, um, yeah. Good Life don't have it on it. Yeah, you know, not really. Because, you know, mm -hmm. Kanye put his flavor mm -hmm. on that. But I was like, Good Life. That's yeah, it. Good Life was crazy. Oh, my. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah, man, that was a fun album, though, dog. Like I say, and it was easy. It was like a, like a layup, dog, because it's easy working with an artist slash producer. Yeah. And when we did um, Big Brother, we was I was just about to leave the studio. It might've been like two in the morning. He was like, hey, two, man, I got this other idea, man. He's like, yo, he's like, like yeah, Big Brother is Big Brother. He's, I was like, okay. And I'm tapping my foot. I'm like, all right, at the BPM. I like, say that shit one more time. Cause he did it and then I waited about an hour later. I was like, man, no, about 20 minutes later. I said, say that hook one more time. He said it again. I said, man, you know what? I'm going to be late tomorrow because I'm going to put something to that right there. Mm. I went home that night. I didn't go to sleep. I just started mm. working on that shit. I said, man, when I see him tomorrow, I'm going to mm. blow his ass away. Mm. Uh, Whoa. I put yeah. that yeah, shit Yeah, we're going to let that one slide. <laughs> 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 right. 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 So, uh, <laughs> and so, um, can't stand it. so, wait, wait, whose idea was it to put, to let the, the drum pattern come in so late? It was Jay's idea or yours? Yeah, 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 yeah. He wanted that because right, he wanted right. to really get that off his, you know, just really want people to just hear the passion, right? You right, know, right. of where yeah. he was coming from at, at on the on the beginning as he led into the record. Right. But yeah, man. Um, you but completed uh, like, that. Yeah, but original, but the original version was that of that I had replayed Prince. It's gonna be lonely. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was the, another the end of the song. Right. Which is one okay. of my my favorite records from the eighties. I just just listened to that shit. You know, over and over again, and um, and it's crazy when he was saying that hook. For some reason, that the, the melody I played while he was saying that hook. That's why I knew I could just jump on that track and go crazy. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, when we got here, we was mixing Big Brother, and at the last minute, man, rest in peace, Prince Rogers Nelson. He hit us at the last minute. And was like, hey, man. First he said no, but then he hit Yay back and was like, um. I got to own 100% of it. Ye was cool with it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nah, bro, I, I ain't finna do that shit. <laughs> That's how I eat, bro. I got to do this. I said, man, I'd rather make another version. They was doubting me. Him and a few other a and they were like, man, I don't know about that shit. So, man, I said, no, I can do it again, bro. I played this shit. It's not a sample. You just move some notes around. Yeah. And so um, what's crazy, I didn't bring that particular laptop up here. So Def Jam flew me down to Atlanta overnight. Picked up the laptop. Went to the lap. Now, I, I got a laptop and went to the studio. Mm. Limo sitting downstairs. I can look at my camera and just limo down there, wait for me to make a new beat. So I'm sitting here listening to it and came up with a whole nother melody. Man, put that shit in the computer, grabbed the computer, jumped in the limo, flight back up here. My shit. That next day we got to the studio. I had to engineer to line that shit up. I'm like, hey, man, make sure you, I said, don't change nothing. Keep the same mix up. I said, it's the same instruments. I just changed the notes. Make it, you know, so now we own that motherfucker. Right. Mm -hmm. And bro, once we press play, man, that shit was like, everybody was like, oh my God. Stadium status. <laughs> but what's funny. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's get to it. Let's get to it. What's funny about that song, throughout the whole company, they was like, man, they got a song talking about Jay. Mm -hmm. And nobody mm -hmm. knew how that shit was. Like, is mm -hmm. it bad or is it good? Nobody knew. Mm -hmm. So Jay showed up, him and Jay Brown. You know, of course, you know, he, had, he, he got them gun, Jay Brown. You know, yeah. should have known that was going to come back around. <laughs> right. Yeah, shout out to Jay Brown, too, right. man. It's good to see uh, him and Jay and them still moving together, too. Right. And um, 
And they came in and uh, they they sat in there. It was me, Ye, Jay Brown, uh, Jay, the engineer, a few other folks, man. And Jay was like, shit, you know, hearing it for the first time. Like, yeah, you know. So what, what was the on. vibe when he walked in though? The vibe, he walked in was like, when are we going to go to work? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Come on, man. Yeah, right. My head didn't blow up, and I'm saying like, man, boy, we finna goddamn go crazy around right, here. Right. So um, the vibe was like, you know, he wasn't sure. He didn't he didn't know. He was like, uh, you know, let's see what's up, you know. Yeah. Don't know if he got them coming, you know, what this shit's going to be, good or bad. Right. And so they sat like behind us. I'm sitting there by the, by the engineer in front of the board and shit. So they're like, yeah, go on and press play. And Ye sitting in the corner, not making contact, eye contact with nobody while the song playing. And, you know, he said the Jay Brown part. You got Jay Brown. I looked over at him, him and Jay looking at each other like, and they fell in love with it. They were like, man, that shit is amazing, man. And the Jay was like, uh, that's how you feel, man? <laughs> 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 that's how you feel? That's how you feel? <laughs> I still remember because he had on a fucking Jacob that was lit up, lit like a motherfucker with a strap band on it, though. Mm. I was like, damn, I'd love to get that one. Mm. But um, yeah, he um, yeah, he, he started talking about you know like yeah, one day you know you want to work because my man Big John that introduced us a while back too. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I knew I was gonna work with him eventually, but shit. Um, All right, before you get into mm -hmm. before we get into the whole bag, okay, we're gonna take a five minute break. This Smack rapper, only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars, I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends leave earth, you heard. Got your baby mama thirst, you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. Just the way you need to surf, you heard.